Peggy 18. The thing we really wanted to do was give the player decisions to make, give the player choices and, and have some consequences to those choices. And some have uh, lightweight or subtle consequences. And some are purely aesthetic. Choice matter because in, in the media of video game, uh, you can make choices where the movies doesn't allow you to make choices. So uh, having the consequences to what you do and, and, and seeing the, how the simulation deals with, with your choices, it feels like the player has full ownership of the experience. My goal is that everything that the player wants to do, he should be able to do it. As you can go everywhere, then it has to be functional everywhere. If he sees a door, it's, it's an opponable door. If he sees a roof, he should be able to climb there, and he knows that this is a valid path. As you guide Corvo through the world, as you see this world from a first-person perspective, and you can constantly approach the game with all-out violence or subtlety, like uh, you, know, you can be very surgical in how you move into an environment and how you deal with the assassination target. Ce qui est vraiment euh, très très intéressant dans, dans Dishonored, euh, c'est euh, la possibilité pour le pour le joueur de, de vraiment euh, inventer son histoire. On va dire, il, il peut il peut vraiment jouer euh, le jeu de la façon dont il a dont il a vraiment envie. Euh, il peut très bien jouer au jeu euh, sans jamais tuer personne, euh, ou alors être une bête sauvage et euh, et, euh, et attaquer tout le monde. Et euh, mais ça aura des conséquences dans, dans le jeu. I feel like we might have made the first assassination game where you don't actually have to kill anybody. Donc l'IA l'IA dans Dishonored est assez particulière dans le sens où il faut qu'elle réagisse vraiment à tout ce que le joueur est capable de faire que ce soit de par ses pouvoirs ou de ce que ce soit ne pas que le joueur peut peut être assez furtif par rapport aux par rapport aux IA et dans Dishonored le joueur a la possibilité donc de, de jouer de différentes façons et s'il choisit la, 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 la façon vraiment furtive essayer de, de There's really no reason for you to listen to me. If you ever need steady work, you come see me. Peut écouter ce que ce que l'IA va va dire. Euh, il peut écouter les conversations, il peut obtenir des euh, quelques, il peut avoir quelques indices en fait sur sur ce qui se passe, sur comment arriver à résoudre ses, euh, sa mission. Oui, donc le, le joueur va pouvoir utiliser des, des combinaisons de pouvoirs euh, assez variés. Euh, du, par exemple, donc euh, il va pouvoir arrêter le temps, euh, commencer à utiliser leur balette pour euh, tirer sur les, les différents ennemis. Les flèches vont euh, prendre le cours normal du temps. Tous les ennemis dans la pièce vont mourir. Il peut utiliser ça de, de façon, euh, il peut utiliser des combinaisons euh, complètement incroyables. Et je pense que euh, on va être assez étonné de ce que les joueurs vont être capables de faire. So when people play Dishonored, and once in a while they figure out something that just feels utterly creative to them, and that they wouldn't have expected to be able to do in the game, that is a magic moment for us. That's what we live for. I watched a guy the other day do something I'd never seen in Dishonored before. He was running away after killing off a couple of high-profile assassination targets, two members of parliament, and he was up high on a balcony. And the jump would have killed him because it was maybe four stories up, uh, but he had the possession power. And in our game, when you possess somebody, it's not like you leave your body behind and possess them with your mind. It's a corporeal thing, so you move physically into them and then you pilot them around. And so he jumped off of this balcony four stories up and plummeted to the ground, and I thought he was gonna die. He was on, on the pavement next to the river. But he was angling for this uh, guard that was walking a patrol down there, and as he got close to the guard, he activated the possession power and moved into the guy, and, and it kills the inertia of the fall. And he lived and walked past the other guards who didn't know anything was wrong. And uh, that is a moment you can't have in another game. What, 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 what's happening? Once a programmer uh, came back to us and he shot a little video of something that was really fun and wanted to show us. So what he did was that he summoned a set of rats, then he froze time, then he pulled out uh, the spring razor, which is this kind of mine that you, you can stick to things. So he could actually froze the rat, uh, stick the, the mine to the rat, then he possessed the rat, and then he moved the rat around and close to a guard and ejected as the mine exploded. I think what is special to Dishonored is that the moment-to-moment -moment emotion is great. In a shooter, for example, you know that shooting at a guy will kill you. And you have to take cover and progress and well. 
But in Dishonored, you can combine things in a way that even the result can be unpredictable. For us, the thing that is a thrill is whenever we are surprised by the game. We see that for the first time, like a uh, character responding to something, the, all those powers will chain together and, and, and still the simulation works. For us, it's, uh, it's really uh, mind-blowing. What I like to do when I'm playing games, you know, to share experiences, every player experience would be uh, pretty different. I would love the player to feel that.